We're Jane Jamie, and today we're celebrating Mickey Mouse in the best way we know how. By turning him into a nightmarish animatronic monster. So we took our kids on their very first Disneyland trip last week, and the Disney Imagineers have always been pioneers of animatronics. It goes without saying that Disney is a huge inspiration, and now that Steamboat Willie is in the public domain, we're gonna recreate that Mickey in the style of a broken down, scary FNAF animatronic. Our plan is to build a completely custom moving head animatronic, which I've definitely never done before, but we're gonna figure it out together. Our first step was commissioning an amazing 3D artist named Beardless Props to create a model for us. He started by modeling the basic old school Mickey shape, and then we worked with him to lay out where the broken parts would be and all the holes and stuff, and the result was phenomenal. Because it's custom, he was even able to add mounting points for the animatronic and like the jaw hinge and stuff. It's awesome. This model, along with all the stuff you'll need to build the animatronic, are gonna be on our Patreon, so check the link below. Now that we have our Mickey model, we can take this into our 3D printing app and slice it up into pieces that'll fit our printer. We'll load up some 3D Fuel PLA and let the magic happen. How's it going over here? It's going really good. I got a bunch of stuff printed. We got the, the ear and the nose. Those are kind of the small pieces. Oh, and we got the other ear printing inside. The rest of the pieces though, they're kind of big, so they're gonna take a few days to print, but that's okay because I can work on other stuff in the meantime. Hey, can you throw me that ear? Yeah. While you're working on the animatronics, I'm gonna get started on these ears. Now, the black parts of Mickey Mouse, I want to be fuzzy. And to do that, I'm gonna use some black blocking fibers. Now, usually you would sand this beforehand to like get rid of the layer lines, but I'm hoping that since this is fuzzy, it's gonna hide those layer lines anyway, and we can save some time. Is that black Mod Podge? Yeah, I just mixed it with a little bit of acrylic paint, and that way it all stays, you know, black. <laughs> totally gonna work. That's gonna save a lot of time not having to like pre-finish everything. Yes it is. Yeah, that's turned out really cool. So what I'm building here is a three axis head mechanism so we can move Mickey's head around. I've been working on this design for a couple of weeks and just kind of trying stuff and iterating as I learn. Like this is the ninth version of <laughs> this piece, for example. But I think we finally got it all working, so let's go ahead and put it together. So first off, we have some servos, which are tiny little motors, and there's gonna be one of these for each axis. The servos get screwed onto this servo plate, which is printed out of 3D Fuel's Pro PLA Plus material, which makes it super rigid. And that's important because you can see on this other one, it like bends all over the place. And if this bends and flexes, this thing isn't gonna work. From here we've got this long screw, which is kind of going to be like the neck, and then attached to it is this little thing called a rod end bearing. And it's got this little part, which when you put it on there, allows it to rotate around like this. So we'll take this rod end bearing and we'll screw it into our servo plate at the top here. And now you can see if we put the shaft into the rod end bearing, it creates the pivot point for the head. Next we've got these little parts called servo horns, and these are going to go on the servos like that, but first we have to attach them to the neck. I created some tiny little linkages here that on the end also have these little ball joints. And one end of this is gonna get screwed onto the end of the neck shaft and the other side is gonna get screwed onto the servo horns. Now we can attach the horns to the servos and everything should be in place. So right now this is upside down, but watch what happens if we move the servos. It actually makes the neck shaft move back and forth. But if we flip it upside down and the neck shaft is secured, then when the servos move, they push and pull themselves around. And that's how we get our head movement. So this is all gonna bolt onto Mickey Mouse's head, but first we gotta finish making that. It's been a few days, but all the 3D printing is done, and now we finally can assemble the head. Look at this thing. This is awesome. It is, uh, it is not supposed to be a costume, but it could be. <laughs> I am happy and impressed with how quickly this was able to just go together. You know what? So on our spring trap, we got really far, and then we tested the animatronic, and it didn't work. No! No! So I think, like, Let's glue this up and then test it before we go any further. Hot dog, hot dog, hot dog. <laughs> Gluing these 3D pieces together when they're so big like this is notoriously hard to get them to line up perfectly. So one of the tricks we did is in the model, we built in these little alignment holes that fit a little screw perfect, perfectly. Get in there, there we go. And that should connect in there. 
and then it helps us line it up. I'm just using super glue because it works great on 3D printed parts. We're not stressing about the lines too much because we're gonna cover most of this in Bondo to give it texture. And then the rest will be flocked over so you won't see that either. All right, now we gotta let it dry again. Yay. Look at that. Yes. Oh, it's heavy. It or is. Heavier than I thought. Which is why I think we really should test it. Yeah, let's, let's, let's hook it up and test it. Okay, so check this out. On the back of the model on the inside, come look. There is like this plate with all these mounting holes. And the idea is we're gonna screw this onto that plate, a little something like that, except it's not, why is it flat? Ooh, ooh. Did you break it? No, no, I didn't break it. Okay. This, <laughs> this screw sticks out behind the plate. So how can we, how can we sit it flat when this screw is sticking out? Um. I could, could make this again, version 10, no. and pull this out further. Oh, no. Oh, oh, what if, what if we just make a little spacer thing? Like, so we can offset a bit. What do you mean? So, oh, like on here? Yeah. Like make a spacer? Uh-huh, with like all the same holes in it. Okay, that'd be pretty easy. I could cut a hole in this to fit the bolt. No, no, no. A spacer, eh? Mm. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, spacer was a good idea. So now we just have like this little thing and it goes on here and now it will clear the bolt. And now we've got these little screws and these should fit through here. <laughs> Although another thing just occurred to me. Uh, how are we gonna screw this on when all this, all the servos and stuff are in the way? I thought you had a plan for that. <laughs> you know me way better than that. Also, I need this to stop rolling. How am I gonna? <laughs> Ha! Huh. That was finicky, but I did manage to get it in there. I just had to take some of the stuff out. So you can kind of see that it's bolted to the back and I think that's pretty strong. So let's give it a test. Okay, you ready for this? Yes. Oh my God. That's amazing. Oh man. I think because it's so heavy, it's like there's a lot of momentum as it moves around, which is throwing things out of order a little bit, but it works. It works, it totally works. Do you like being an animatronic? Yeah, this is. is cool. Did you see that there are already a ton of games and movies using uh, Steamboat Willie and Mickey here? They wasted no time and they all look totally different, which is awesome. Are any of them called Screamboat Willie? I don't think so, but there should be. Just like with all those Mickey games and stuff, there's a ton of ways we could have gone to make our version scary. And one of the ways we organize our vision is with Milano, the sponsor of today's video. Milano is an amazing digital tool for organizing all of your creative projects. We use it for almost everything we make because it's super visual. We like to collect tons and tons of pictures and reference images, and Milano boards give us the perfect way to keep it all in one place. And when we work with another person, like a 3D modeler, for example, we can share the boards with them, which makes it super easy to collaborate. Along with pictures, you can collect notes, videos, task lists, you can create color palettes, basically whatever you need. For this one, we've got a board of Steamboat Willie reference, then we've got another board for inspiration and ideas, then we have one for all of our design details. When you make a board, you can choose from over 100 built-in templates or make it from scratch. And all this stuff works seamlessly between their mobile app, a web browser, or their desktop app. Milano is available totally free with no time limit, so if you make stuff, you should try it. We really like it and it'll probably help you too. You can sign up using the link in the description below and if you end up using it, let us know in the comments. This is Bondo Spot Putty and we're gonna use it on our head to get it ready for paint. Now on the back, since it's gonna be flocked, all I'm really gonna worry about is filling in all of the seams where we glued the pieces together. But on the front, since that's gonna be painted, the printer left these little layer lines here, so I wanna fill those in. But what the Bondo is also gonna do for us is let me build up a texture that I can then carve in some cracks and damage into, kinda like we did with Ghostface. Now, when I was applying it, I started using like a little tapping motion, which made this really cool rough texture that I actually like. On the head though, since it's just in those lines here, I am gonna sand that down. 
I ended up sanding like some of the areas and left a lot of them rough. It's gonna give us really nice variation in texture once it gets painted. And like, you know, this is like the rotting area and this is not so rotten. Now, it's time to paint this guy. All right, we painted Mickey black with just some black spray paint primer because I'm getting it ready for paint, but also I'm gonna do the flocking on the top part of the head and I don't want those weird orange spots showing through. It's crazy to me how easy this is. You just put on the glue and you just sort of push the thing. That's so cool. But we're still gonna like mess it all up, right? Yeah, we'll scrape some patches off and make it look old like the rest of his face. Hey, did you steal my jaw? I did. I'm trying to figure out how to make it move. Are you having to... any luck? Uh, I, th I think so. I'm designing a, like a, an adapter basically because it's gonna like attach it to the head but also allow it to connect and, and move and it's not quite working yet, but it's gonna, it's gonna work. So can I have it back so I can paint it in the meantime? <laughs> I'm gonna paint the face like the dirty whitish gray, but before I put that coat on, I'm gonna put on some crackle medium. And what this is gonna do is allow that top coat to crack naturally so I don't have to paint cracks in. This stuff gives it like this really cool cracked makeup, cracked porcelain, like little fine hairline cracks. It's, it's pretty neat. Our top layer is cracking where we put the crackle stuff and showing all the black stuff underneath. That looks so cool. Yeah, it does. Hey, look, I got the jaw working. Ah, 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 ah. Basically, I started with just trying to build a hinge so that the jaw could connect to the head. In the 3D model, we put a hole here in the jaw, and then there's this tab on the inside of the head, and so I had to make a little arm to connect those two things together. And this part was pretty smooth. See, it works. <laughs> but this is only half of it, because next I had to figure out how to hook this up to a servo. So basically, I just started building and trying things. Eventually, after seven or eight versions, I think I found it, so let's check it out. So first, I cut a plastic servo horn into this little thing here, and then I screwed that onto this adapter I made, which connects to a screw. Then I took my original hinge arm thing and made some changes to it, and the screw goes through here and into the jaw. Now I can put the servo on like this and screw it into the little arm, which makes it so that when the servo turns, the jaw rotates. The little bracket gets screwed back onto the head, and then there we go, check it out. It mostly works. It seems to... Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, uh. What happened? I, it, started, it started making a really weird whining noise, and now it smells really bad, and it's hot, uh, which I think means we burned it out. That's not good. No, it's not good at all. I thought that just one of them was gonna be strong enough, and it was, it was moving, but the more I used it, I think I just killed it. One hour later. Okay, I fixed it. Yay! <laughs> Watch. I thought maybe the servo just wasn't strong enough, but it was actually because I had tightened it way too tight. So instead of freely rotating, it was like grinding against this, the side. Adjusted it, and now it works again. Disaster over. I thought I was gonna have to redesign the whole thing again. But you know, honestly, like this is probably isn't the best way to do it. There's probably 10 other ways that I haven't discovered yet, but that's okay, it works. And that's what we're after. Now that it's on there, can we make the teeth? Almost. I wanna put the ears on first. That way when we're putting the ears on, we don't like knock the teeth off. The ears, good idea. Okay. <laughs> All right, so on the ears, we've got a couple of little screw holes here, and then we have matching holes on the top of the head. Now, we discovered that the screws don't really fit well <laughs> into the screw holes, so we're gonna glue them in so they're extra secure. He's a mouse now. He does mostly look like a mouse, finally. Except for the nose. Can we just put his nose on? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, I love it. Now can we do the teeth? Now we can do the teeth. Yes. <laughs> when we made the teeth on spring trap, we used EVA foam and that worked beautifully. So for this, we're not gonna reinvent the wheel. We're just gonna do what works. First, I'm gonna start by putting this piece of scrap foam inside of his mouth and I will draw my teeth on this and that will be my template. My next step is to transfer those shapes onto a piece of EVA foam, and I'll cut that out, and then I can shape it a little bit with a Dremel, then we can paint it. I'm 
gonna use hot glue to put the teeth in. That way, if I do need to make any adjustments, make any shorter or reposition them, it should be pretty easy to take them off. I love him. Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> There's, they turned out so cool. This is what pushed him from like, kind of like just, you know, normal Mickey Mouse to like scary Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Like a mouse having canine teeth is just super weird. It's and they look so real. They look almost like dinosaur teeth or something. <laughs> yeah. Do we get to do the eyes next? Yes. The so old Mickey doesn't really have any eyeballs or irises. They're kind of like just these dark black voids, which are are already pretty creepy. But we're gonna try something here. We're gonna use these clear Easter egg ornaments, and they're kind of oblong shape, which matches the shape of Mickey's eyes. I'm gonna start by scuffing up the inside of this Easter egg, which is gonna diffuse the light, but it will keep the outside smooth and shiny. You can use a piece of sandpaper, or if you have a Dremel, you can use a bit like this to get a nice smooth kind of cool look. Okay, next we're gonna put a little iris on here. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna take a little piece of blue tape and we're gonna put it on the eye to kind of position where the center is. And then we're gonna paint a ring around that with some black paint. How do you wanna do the cover that goes around it, Jane? Do you wanna do like on Springtrap where we did the foam? Yeah, I think we're gonna use the foam, but I think I might have to make a pattern for it. Yeah, cause it's not round. Yeah. It's easy when it's round, you just make a circle. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm gonna glue the edges together with barge, but that's not gonna give us a perfect round piece. So afterwards, what I need to do is heat bend it over the shape. My seams aren't coming together perfectly, so I'm gonna use a little bit of spackle to fill those in and then sand it. So I designed some parts to hold the eyes in place and there's starting with this little plate and the eye is gonna kind of basically go on it like that. But before we put that on, we're gonna take this little red LED and we're gonna put it through the hole in the center and then I'm gonna flip it over and hot glue it in place. So next I'm gonna take a piece of tin foil and I'm gonna put it like this because it's gonna reflect the LED light and hopefully make it a little brighter. Now I can just trim off the edges so it fits nice and clean. Now I've got a hole poked in here and I'm gonna take this little screw and I'm gonna push it through. And then I'm gonna take this little arm that we made and it's gonna to attach to the back, just like that. And this actually attaches to the servo plate so it's all sort of like one unit. First we'll snap on the eye into the plate, dab a glue on there, we'll hold it in place, and then we can put our eye cover on top of that. So now I'm gonna attach these inside the head to the servo plate, but it's gonna be like impossible for you guys to see me doing it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and attach it and then show you what it looks like. I love it. It's, it's so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Should we test the lights? Yes. That's amazing. Does it look good? So good. Wait, and watch this. If I hold this button, his eyes start shorting out. <laughs> Because <laughs> he's an old broken animatronic, you know? I can't wait to turn it all on at the same time. Mickey Mouse needs a tongue, so I made him one. Now to make this, what I did was I used this packing foam. I don't know what it's called, but it's soft and squishy and really light. So I cut out the rough shape with an X-Acto knife. Then I used this Sureform tool to kind of round it over. And then that gave us this. The problem is it's really fuzzy. So I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna cover it in a little bit of liquid latex and see if that gives me a nice, smoother texture. Oh. I don't know what happened. <laughs> hey, I didn't get it on the camera. I think that's enough latex. We're just gonna use it. It's yeah, fine. There you go. <laughs> All right, this is gonna dry for at least a couple of hours, and then I may need to put another coat on it. We'll see. Just don't spill it again. Shh. <laughs> okay, I did two coats of latex on this, and I love how it turned out. It is super, like, bumpy, but not fuzzy. It's just like I imagine a really gross tongue would be. So now it's time to paint the tongue, and I'm gonna paint him white, which sounds a little weird, but we're trying really hard to stay close to the Steamboat Willie Mickey Mouse, and that's a black and white cartoon. So we're trying to bring that black and white concept into the real world. 
dirty Nick. white tongue. Gross. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> So I'm gonna put the tongue here, and what I did is I added a thin piece of foam right there, and I'm gonna glue the tongue right there. <laughs> it's so gross. No. <laughs> and now, the final details for Nightmare Mickey. A little silver paint on all the edges will give it some depth and help it look like it's made of metal. All the painting and details are gonna add layers and help bring it to life. Every smudge and spot tells a story. Our Mickey has been trapped in a condemned theme park for decades, collecting dust and grime, you know, wandering the streets at night. He's filthy and falling apart, but he still has that creepy, innocent look to him. If you need inspiration, there are so many scary Mickeys out there. There's all the new movies and games coming out. There's even a fan-made game called Five Nights at Treasure Island with a bunch of really cool Mickey variants. It's amazing. Even with just the head, this is one of the craziest things we've made. <laughs> Designing characters is hard, and so much goes into making animatronics. We definitely still have a lot to learn about the mechanics and design, but we're going to keep at it. Okay, I think it's ready to go. I've got them all plugged in. I've programmed an Arduino so I can puppet Mickey with a PlayStation controller. Here we go. I, uh, I think Mickey's dead. <laughs> I don't know, something broke in here. Aww. Honestly, I'm surprised he worked at all. <laughs> this is our first time doing this, and to even get this far, absolute win. We're definitely gonna keep going on Mickey. We're gonna fix his head. We'll probably even give him a body. And if you wanna follow along with that and learn with us, check out our Patreon. The link is down below. And until next time, stay wicked.